love. Some would say it took a backseat when the pandemic forced us apart. As a family-run and proudly Canadian-owned company, Charm Diamond Centres saw the need to bring us together with tales of love and created the Canadian Love Map podcast. Since then, we've shared hundreds of real, uplifting stories that prove love conquers all. So thank you for listening. We couldn't do it without you. And remember, love starts here. Don't you just love a good love story? Love is like that. It's the light that is part of your life. It's unconditional. There's something there for all of us. There's hope that we can get through this and find some joy in our lives. He's always been the one. Self-love is a love story too. Those little sparks of joy are really important. Imagine someone making your biggest dream come true. It's important for people to understand that you're not alone. Well, we love to be part of a Canadian love story. The love story never ends. Well, love is the most important thing. Dear Allison, I know we had planned to travel here together, but of course, with our breakup, it made sense to call it off. I'm happy you decided to come and enjoy this part of the world. With all of the planning we did for this trip, I also felt compelled to come on this adventure and enjoy Guatemala for myself. I'm currently at a guest house here writing to you because frankly, I can't get you off my mind. Hi, I'm Nancy Regan. Today's love story belongs to Danny and her parents, who also happen to be the inspiration for her now famous cocktail, The Liquid Love Letter. The recipe is equal measures of romance, travel, and adventure. This is the Canadian Love Map. Danny, Allison, and Brian, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. This is a first for the Canadian Love Map. We've never done an episode on a cocktail before. <laughs> and okay, so let's just dive right into that cocktail. Yeah. Uh, Danny, we're going to start with you. First of all, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So set yeah. the table for us. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a bartender in Whistler, British Columbia. Um, I've been working at the same bar, which is called the Raven Room for about two and a half years now. But I've been bartending for about eight years off and on. Um, I kind of found this passion through like summer gigs throughout my years of university. I'd kind of just get a bar job and start working, saving enough money so I could just travel on my, my time off and then spend all that money come back to Canada, work in a new bar, make a bunch of money to pay off all my debt and then travel again. Um, and it just kind of became this like cycle for basically all of my my 20s until COVID hit. And then I really got feeling very passionate about craft cocktail culture. And I started working behind uh, craft cocktail bars and I was learning so much about spirits and the history of classic cocktails. And I just fell so deeply in love with the art of bartending and kind of just decided that that was what I wanted to do. I started working at the Raven Room and it was a really good lab for me because they basically have everything you can imagine. All of the spirits you could ever think of are <laughs> sitting on the beautiful back bar. So I had so much freedom to play with creativity and started creating menus there and just fully furthermore fell in love with the art of cocktail creation. And as well as that, I started competing in bartending comps and cocktail comps, which is a really niche market. Uh, not many people even know that it exists. So I've been yeah. doing that for the past year and a half now. And uh, last year I actually was in France representing Canada for or a cocktail comp. And then just a couple months ago, I applied to World Class, which is the biggest and most prestigious cocktail competition in the world. About 60 countries are involved in it. And Canada has been involved in it with, within the past 10 years. So this is the 10 year anniversary for World Class Canada. So I've known about this cocktail competition for years, like basically ever since I started getting more interested in craft cocktails. Um, and it always just really intimidated me. For the past couple of years, I just put it off and I was just um, like spectating from, from uh, the Instagram stories and you can watch it live and just following all the contestants and the judges and just got really into the, the family behind World Class and knew a lot about it, but was always just so intimidated. And then it crept up on me this year and uh, I decided to go for it. So tell me a little bit more about it. Set the stage for us in terms of what world class or a cocktail competition in general is like. 
Yeah. So world class is basically the Olympics of bartending. However, all these cocktail competitions are, there's, there's obviously a set of rules and you're put through many different challenges and you kind of always have to have a reason for, for why you created the cocktail the way that it did, why you chose those ingredients, why you chose the spirit, this and that. And you always want to have a good story. And it's sometimes even more about the story and the way that you present um, more than the cocktail itself. Like, obviously, you're going to get judged on taste and aroma, but you're going to get a lot of your points from the presentation and your charisma and how you talk about the ingredients and how you speak about the brand that's hosting the competition. So it's all these little categories that you're going to collect points in in order to win these competitions. And more times than than not, uh, someone's going to win who has like an incredible presentation and um, ability to speak publicly. So did you come up with your cocktail before you applied or once you applied, did you say, okay, now I've got to really get creative? So I decided to apply and was kind of just thinking of like a story that I could have first, because that's kind of who I am, I guess, in uh, cocktail competitions is a storyteller. I've been told that many times throughout Mm -hmm. my, my journey of of competing. So I'm like, okay, I really need a good story in order to get myself far in this competition. So I kind of just looked through their portfolio and I saw Zacapa, which is a Guatemalan rum. I'm like, Ooh, I love rum. I'm like, I have many stories from my travel. So maybe I can connect this to a time that I was in Guatemala. And I was like, Oh my God, I have the story. My parents, when they were in Guatemala and the love story and the letter, I'm like, Oh my God. Like it just all came together so perfectly. I'm like, I'm going to (laughs) win. You just gave me chills. Even when you said that, when you went, yes, I have the story. Yeah. So everything just kind of came together. As soon as I chose the spirit, Guatemalan rum, I knew I had the story, the story that's been in our family for over 30 years about my parents, the story of their reconnection and how our family truly came to be and just how I could connect the rum itself to the story. And nothing else mattered at that point. I was like, I got this. I had to get the letter. So of course there was the love letter. So then I involved my parents with the application process, because obviously I need, I needed them. I needed all the information they could give me. Did they get a big kick out of the fact that you were going to create a cocktail based on their <laughs> love story? Oh yeah. They feel like they're famous right now. Don't, don't you guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it almost, it almost like made them fall in love all over again. Like I was getting them to dig up all their old love letters and to, f- to find the one and kind of retouch on that whole situation and uh trip that happened and kind of getting all the details they would give me. But yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was good little bonding. (laughs) Okay. Well, we are going to take a trip back in time now with Allison and Brian and find out about the story that uh, inspired the drink. And we'll come back to you, Danny. Yeah, sounds good. Allison and Brian, tell me about (laughs) how you guys met and eventually got together. When Danny, when Danny originally asked us to, to, find a letter we were we just we were sitting at home watching a movie and we said well we'll do that and we'll text you back tomorrow and she said well no i need it now <laughs> that's so danny yeah. i need it now <laughs> yeah i not to mention i applied this was like i had like five days to come up with this like i was very i'm always very last minute and so it, it, I, ha- I was like no i've got five day deadline like i need this letter now start looking <laughs> chop to it yeah yeah okay. <laughs> I kept the ones Brian wrote me. He didn't keep so many that I wrote him. But anyway, we're good. But uh, I guess we we met teaching in 1981. We're both teachers. So we met at a school um, in Stouffville, Ontario, and a young crowd of teachers, a lot of new teachers then. So it was fun. And we were all friends and, and getting together on weekends and doing things and so it was a really special relationship with our friends. So we were friends for a good two years before any strong romantic connection happened. So that was kind of where it all began at St. Mark's School in Stouffville, Ontario. <laughs> That's great. So you had that foundation of friendship. And how did it morph into romance? Well, we just we just kind of surrendered to it. You know? We just kind of uh, got to know each other a little more and more and uh Started doing things together, just the two of us traveling. We we love to ski, so we t- did a couple of ski trips to Banff for that, and then um, just kind of developed from there. And and do you remember it as being a very fun relationship? What's the word? If you could describe it with one word, what would it be? 
adventurous. We've always we've, we've always done adventurous things. Uh, we both loved to travel before we got married, and you know we, we each traveled on our own before we met each other, and then uh, we just kind of took those adventures into our relationship and continued to do them. And uh, we found that we our love of travel was kind of a bond between us. It, it just kind of felt really comfortable because both of us were on the same wavelength all the time. And our career, like we both yeah. were in teaching, so we could really relate, mm-hmm. you know, and we come home after work and go, oh, do I have a story to tell you or whatever? Like just report card time. We're sitting there at the dining room table, <laughs> you know, still in our dating age, writing report cards together and helping each other. So the whole career thing was really another building block to this relationship. That's great. So it sounds like, you know, there's going to be an obvious happily ever after, but it wasn't that simple, right? It wasn't that simple. <sighs> yeah. That would make a boring cocktail. This is going to, yeah. this has to make a yeah, great exactly. cocktail. So exactly. what happened next? <laughs> Thank goodness you broke up. <laughs> <laughs> Says her daughter. I love that. Yeah. So yes. So what went wrong? So uh, what went wrong? Everything was going great, but it's the same thing over and over and over. And like, I knew what I wanted. I definitely wanted to be married and have a family and, you know, children and that. And Brian wasn't quite ready there. Like he wasn't uh, on the same page. So, you know, even though you love someone deeply, it's just you got to look at the future and say, what's what's your number one thing here? So it turned out to be a mutual uh, time. Okay, we're just going to go our own ways now. We built a lot of friendships. Like we had, a that was hard too, because we had so many friends, couple friends. And it's like, all right, well, I get Pat and Nancy and you can have them. It's like, you know, it was like, it's not like you're married and you're separating your property. It was like our our friends that we had uh, enjoyed so much together. So anyway, we moved on and we went our different paths and, um, that's what happened. Yeah, I, I kind of think that I, I, w- I had been in a previous marriage, so I was kind of reluctant to get into something a little more, uh, you know, stronger than that at that time. So I was really careful about that kind of thing. So we decided, let's just uh, take some time apart and uh, figure out what we really want. So you went your separate ways. And then tell me how you came back together. So we went our separate ways. and really not much contact between us at all. And because I'm thinking to myself, okay, I planned this really nice trip and it looked great, did all this research. And so I asked a friend if she wanted to do this trip with me. So um, my girlfriend and I went to Guatemala and uh, had a great time. Yeah, and I kind of uh, I kind of said to myself the same thing. I said, you know, we have kind of planned this trip, so I'm just going to go there on my own and travel around like I did uh, previous to when we married and all that, just do a, a solo trip to Guatemala, which is kind of weird. Like we were so much alike that we even think to like. <laughs> so you both said, you know, just because we broke up doesn't mean I shouldn't benefit from this beautiful trip. Exactly. And you ended up being there at the same time. Yeah, it was funny because um, we had mutual friends, which as Allison said, that we kind of hung around with, the, with each other. And as we got closer to the time of the trip, I uh, heard from one of our friends that Allison was going there with her friend Sonia. I figured I would just write a letter and uh, leave it at this guest house because I I found out that uh, she and Sonia had booked this guest house as well. So I stayed there for, I think it was four days, maybe four days in that guest house. And so I wrote this letter and it's basically a take me back letter. I know we've been apart for four months and I keep thinking about you and being in this beautiful place. Um, if you can see it in your mind, I'd, I'd love to reconnect with you and see where we go from there. That is amazing. And were you, after you left that letter, were you still in the country? Yeah, I was in another location. I went to, um, there was a lake there that, um, well, Allison wrote it down here. Lake Atitlan. <laughs> At land, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so I went up there because um, I had read about it and knew that it was a beautiful place. So I decided to go up there. Hopefully she would get my uh, my letter that I left at the guest house. So you went up there and held your breath. <laughs> I went up there and held my breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, tell me from your perspective about arriving at the guest house and finding it. Well, I must admit, like, I mean, I, you know, because this trip was planned with Brian, like, you know, there were thoughts of him in my head, but I was with such a good friend that even though I just said Brian was in my head, then he really wasn't because 
you know, I was just having so much fun and fun with Sonia and you meet people all the time. So it's just, I don't know, it's just a great experience. And then we walk into this guest house, Sonia and I, and, you know, the lady says, oh, Alice McCord, there's a letter here for you. You know, and I see the handwriting and I go, oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, of course, read the letter and I'm crying and it's, you know, I'm crying. <laughs> anyway, I love that there's so much emotion attached yeah. to it still. That's beautiful. Anyway, Brian left an address on where he was going to be. If you're up to it, want to meet up, this is where I'll be in the next couple of days. So, Sonia, you want to come? On? <laughs> so we did. So Sonia, also a friend of Brian. So the three of us met up, you know, just had a good time, friendship and all about that. Sonia wasn't staying as long as I was. So we had a couple of days with Brian and then Sonia's trip was over. She was a nurse, so she didn't have as long off as I did. So then <laughs> Brian and I were together. <laughs> wow, the, plot, the plot thickens. <laughs> beautiful Guatemala. Wow. We couldn't share the great stories that we do here on the Canadian Love Map podcast without the amazing support of Charm Diamond Centres. They are Canada's largest family-owned jeweler, and they're proud to be putting love on the map. The folks at Charm Diamond Centres are thrilled to be a part of your love story. So visit CharmDiamondCentres.com or one of your local stores. Love starts here. Amazing. Do you do you happen to have the letter there? And I think Danny happens to I, have, I have a, a version copy of it somewhere. So this is quite funny. So I obviously needed the letter, the take me back letter. And dad was like, well, or I, I think mom, actually, you said you're like, well, you can't read the whole thing. <laughs> There's too many things in this letter that you don't want to read. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. So dad, you need to rewrite this letter because I need a physical copy of it for my, for my submission. I need it to be in the video and this and that. So I have the rewritten version somewhere. Yeah, I have it in here. Yeah, it would have been a shame to have a redacted version. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big black blocks, Crossing so. some things out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have an edited version of that letter. <laughs> I, I think it would be cool for us to hear you read a little bit of it, Danny. Yeah, I can do as that. As their daughter. Dear Allison, I know we had planned to travel here together, but of course, with our breakup, it made sense to call it off. I'm happy you decided to come and enjoy this part of the world with your girlfriend. With all of the planning we did for this trip, I also felt compelled to come on this adventure and enjoy Guatemala for myself. I'm currently at a guest house here writing to you because, frankly, I can't get you off my mind. Oh Shall my I go gosh. on? <laughs> so that's, that's the G-rated version, everybody. <laughs> that's, yeah, the, yeah. That's, that's the intro. And then he kind of goes on to basically saying like that he's realized what he really wants and what he really wants is her and what he really wants is the family and this and that and basically telling her that he is on the same page as her and wants to rekindle and yeah he, he literally says like i'll be staying at the casa gitan guest house on lake attilan from the 15th to the 20th i love and miss you please forgive me brian oh my <laughs> gosh that's amazing yeah so, so do i dare ask how the rest of that trip was for you too <laughs> <laughs> well, we rekindled our relationship, definitely. There was and, some fire. Uh, yeah. Yes. So this was in August and we went back and we're together again. And like just, just sharing with our families, you know, everybody was cheering for us. We enjoyed the fall and then uh, come um, the new year. I think we went on another ski trip and then it's like, okay, like here I am again. Okay. What's going on now? <laughs> so uh, then we finally together mutually okay we're getting married so it was like not any uh no there's no there's no down on your knee or anything like that uh, it was just i think we were sitting in the car one day maybe we had a party and i said oh yeah that, that's right yeah and i think <laughs> i said i really love this this life <laughs> i'm loving it more every day so uh why don't we get married? So, <laughs> so why casual. don't we seal the deal? Yeah. And we sealed the deal in a, in a 1980 Toyota Corolla. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. I was, I was just going to say that it must have been such a great party because you had so many mutual friends and your families knew one another. The, the, what was the wedding like? Uh, oh, the wedding was, was good. So this was in April. We uh, decided to get married and share with the family and we, 
went to all our family's houses with a bottle of champagne and told everybody the news. So that's April. And we put together a wedding for that August, so August 14th. So all summer there was parties and getting ready for it. And uh, the wedding was in Toronto at the Royal York. And it was uh, lots of family and friends. It was just a party and dancing all night long. And, uh, you know, then we had a room. Everybody came to our room after. And our flight was um, the next morning at, what, 7 o'clock yeah. to uh, Guadeloupe. So we never went to sleep at all. And then we go to the airport and our flight's been delayed 12 hours. <laughs> and, <it was> like, <laughs> and, and we had this beautiful room at the Royal York. We had to leave. Oh, but no. anyway, it was all part of the adventure. <laughs> How can you sum up the rest of your adventure of life being married? How would you put it into words in a few sentences? That's a, that's a good one. Like we we always kind of talk to each other, you know, and say, what is our next adventure? And if it just means going for a walk and going to a coffee shop, we treat that as an adventure, as a special time. And I think that's the kind of key to, to being in a relationship is have that sense of adventure, whether it's just wa- a walk and going to the coffee shop or, uh, you know, we're skiing with our daughters, skiing with our daughters <laughs> or uh, we, we going have to a Spain. family. <laughs> yeah, going to Spain, uh, which we're, we're going to Spain in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, we have a cottage, too. So we, we take adventures on our jet ski. And I, I think that sense for me is what keeps our love kind of fresh. And particularly with Danny, with this with this little thing here, cocktail competitions, that's kind of rekindled the whole love story once again. And now we're we're married almost, how long have we been married? 36 nearly. You know. Nearly 36 years. It's like we're getting married and falling in love all over again, <laughs> just going back on all this stuff. That's just what keeps it fresh, you know, just adventure. And I think having uh, the three daughters following in our footsteps and traveling, like at one time, all all three girls lived out in BC and we're still in Ontario, but we did a road trip to BC. We did a road trip to the East Coast, where you are, Nancy, with a pop-up trailer. So they've seen Canada with us. And to see them pick up on that and to appreciate the adventures we've shared with them and to carry it on and create their own, that just even makes us feel, wow, we did well. This is, you know, good teamwork. <laughs> and yeah. now we have a grandson. So uh, it continues. It's interesting because you used the word rekindled. And I said, oh, there was fire. And then when I hear you saying this, I think about how you've given that spark of adventure Uh, to each of your three children. Well said. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. What do you love most about each other? First, I'll ask Allison and Brian. Oh, well, again, I I guess we share all the different things that we love. Brian is very deep and it's kind of hard to get to know him from an outsider. And then the fact that I know him so well, it's, to me, that's really special that he's so deep. He just takes his time and thinks things out so deeply and has true meaning in, in them. It's just it's hard to explain. I think before I write. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you think before you write, you think before you talk. He, he takes a long time to do things. <laughs> and he's just like, he's my support person. Um, we could just talk to each other about different things or like, you know, bringing children into the world and, and raising them. It's like, you know, uh, we've also been through sad times with our families and uh, again, being supportive of when we've lost siblings or things like that. It's just a great support and um, cherish my beautiful husband. <laughs> Brian, what do you love most about her? I'd have to say uh, she's she's my biggest support person. I, I kind of have different interests in that. Like I've, I've acted in community theater and she supported me in, in you know, the plays that I've been in. And uh, I love that she shares the same values that I do with family and uh, and good friends and good wine and uh, good conversation. It's just been a, a beautiful yeah. journey. Wonderful. Well, this is different. Mom and dad, what do you love most about Danny? <laughs> well, again, we love her enthusiasm with life. She just gets, you know, very excited about everything. She's a very last minute girl, though. So it's it's funny how that comes about. But everything falls into place. You know, you think, oh, my God, Danielle. But it works. <laughs> it really works. And uh, her enthusiasm of life, she picked up the travel bug. 
And you made a reference to Mount Everest. Well, Danny's actually uh, climbed up to base camp. She's oh. done Kilimanjaro. Oh. Like she's just a go-getter and she gets things done. Uh, she has a huge network of friends around the world. Um, so it's just like to see her excitement in every day is uh, heartwarming. Danny, that's pretty nice to hear, I'm sure, from <laughs> your perspective. <laughs> What do you have to say about these people that inspired your cocktail? Oh my God, I could go on forever. No, I just love my parents as individuals, but as a unit as well. Like they're just at this point in the relationship too. It's just so comical to see them like aging together. And they're just like, they're just like everything about them. Like I just absolutely love the two of them together. They're so opposite. Like my dad, cool, calm, collected, like old and wise and my mom is just like me like outgoing like so like spontaneous and lights up a room wherever she goes like you know when Allison enters a room my dad is more like kind of reserved and you have to kind of like look for him in a room but he's 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 in the corner observing and and spectating and um they're just so so opposite but so alike in their interests. And I think that makes for a wonderful foundation of a relationship, clearly. I also love how much I see of them in myself. So much of what they love and what they grew up doing, like I am so inspired by and I have wanted to take into my life. Like literally yesterday, my dad and I were up Whistler Mountain snowboarding together. And my my dad taught me how to snowboard and my mom helping me with all these cocktail competitions. And um, it just kind of like, it's reminiscent of like back when I was in, in school and her helping me with all of my like projects and just like the teacher within her kind of shines through and yeah, they've just been with me through everything and they've been always there to support me and my sisters as well. And they've just done such a great job raising all three of us. And it just shows how strong their relationship is. So what is in the cocktail and what is its name? <laughs> so the cocktail is called Liquid Love Letter and it is a uh, Zacapa rum base. So obviously the Guatemalan rum and with the rules, it was only five ingredients you could you could use. So I chose the rum and I thought it paired really well with vanilla. So I used uh, a vanilla liqueur. I used a tawny port because the dryness of the port kind of worked well with the sweetness of the vanilla and then the really sweet notes of the rum, they kind of all worked together. And then I used a little bit of cherry juice um, and some orange bitters. And that was my five ingredients. And then I had a beautiful vanilla orchid as the garnish. And that kind of tied in the tropical vibes from Guatemala and it looked beautiful. I had a video made by a, a local videographer and I had all these photographs of my parents from Guatemala that was actually so, so lucky that Sonia was there. She was able to take these gorgeous photos of my parents while they were there. And I had <laughs> the printout of the love letter and the video just hit a home run and it, it's been viewed quite a few times. And I've been able to get on this podcast from it, which is so amazing. Right. And your I might as well give you your handle right now. Your Instagram handle is drinking with Danny, D-A-N-I. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just in case, because I I think people listening are going to, well, okay, now I need to see that. I need yeah, to yeah, that. yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It, it honestly like gives me full body shivers still when I watch it. It's it's he did a great job. He just nailed my vision. So I'm, I was really happy with it. Well, we're really glad we found you because we've been excited about this. We've been chatting about it all week. Oh, this is going to be such a great story. And yeah. it is. You delivered <laughs> big time. <laughs> is there anything we didn't talk about that we missed? I think it's quite amazing that almost a year to the date, like you met in Guatemala in August and a year later they were married. So it just goes yeah. to show like that, how quick everything came together after that trip. It's just neat to have that place uh, so special. Like I, we, we all have to go back together. I think <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Next family trip. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. let me know when you go, because I think I'll meet you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make me that cocktail. How about that? Yeah, time? yeah, exactly. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you the one last question I have for you is what about your parents' love has inspired you? Or maybe another way to ask that is what have you learned from watching your parents' relationship? Well, they've definitely set the bar high, which is, and, and especially you, dad, like, I don't know how I'm ever going to find a man to write me love letters the way that you did to mom, <laughs> like, especially in this day and age, like what a little text is not going to cut it. Um, but yeah, they've set the, they set the bar high. Um, but I just love how, how they have such shared interests and the fact that they've found each other within the same industry of work. 
I think that's so special. I, I, I'd love to, to have a connection with someone who completely understands what I do for work as well. I think that's so special, but, um, shared interests, I think is inspiring. And I've learned that that's so important in a loving relationship. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your beautiful story. It's just, uh, it's inspiring and entertaining and fabulous. Thank you so much for thank having you, us. Nancy. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Canadian Love Map. If you love us, please subscribe and share. And if you want to help us spread the love even more, rate and review our podcast. It makes such a difference. We'll be back next week with another love story to add to the map. This podcast is presented and made possible by Charm Diamond Centers. It's hosted by me, Nancy Regan, and is produced and distributed by Podstarter.